What's up? This is Nate Bargetzi, stand-up comedian, maybe actor one day, who knows, but Nate Bargetzi, and you listen to Ego's Last Stand. When I come around, got the whole thing wobbing. All right, and we're back for another episode of The Ego's Last Stand. My name is Josh Sarm. I'm one of your hosts, and I'm joined with Brandy Nicole. Hello. Brandy, how are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to be here again today. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> we, we keep having a lot of fun with everybody we have yeah, on here. And, la cool. and last, <laughs> last time we had a, a, a little intro thing we did. That was fun. Did you like it? I did. I'm glad we finally got to talk about Forrest Gump. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I actually got a uh, medical professional on the line, and they want to <laughs> condemn both of us to a I mental knew it. institution. I knew it. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> and, and as you can hear, guys, and see, we have the amazing, the funny, one of my personal good friends. Uh -huh. I got to get whatever I can. No, that's fine. No, <laughs> Matt Holt is on the show with us. I think you should have included the available. The av Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I, don't okay. mean, I don't mean like, well, that, yeah, I do mean that. But I mean, <laughs> I was available to the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, well. You know, you, you got to do those things. You got you to get it where you can get it, right? Get on Scruff. Absolutely. Get on what? Get on Scruff. Remember we what's, talked about the last what's time. What's I don't know. what She comes up with these things. I don't know what Scruff People is. Come up. It's where you meet fancy gentlemen. Oh, well, I'm not. I'm really not trying to find a fancy gentleman. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to rule it out. <laughs> At this stage of the game. I'm on the road, so yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Speaking of the road, uh, where, what, where have you been recently, man? Uh, I just got back from uh, JFL in Montreal. Are you kidding so me? Fun. Yeah. Oh my God. So, how how was that stage? It was it, well. I, I went as industry. So. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, for the, for the the for the label and for the podcast network. Yeah. So oh, yeah, um, it was great. So it was our second year going and uh, met a lot of great people. Saw some great shows and um, Howie Mandel bought that festival last year. Yeah. So he owns it now. Uh, this year he was around all the time. Right. Which was kind of cool. That's you know? neat. And like you know, you you can see the. Like you can see people who don't really belong versus who do because right. like they're the ones taking pictures of everyone. <laughs> sure. It's, just, it's, it's kind of a no, a no picture zone. You right. Know, like no selfies and right. that. Uh, last year, um, I met uh, Dave Chappelle and John Mayer together. Awesome. And yeah, I don't have a that picture so of that. Cool. But, uh, but you know. Yeah, but it was but it was it was great. Montreal is a beautiful town. It's a great food city. It's a good drinking city. Yeah. Uh, it's Canada, so they're nicer than us. <laughs> That's true. It's so amazing. I've heard that. It's true. It's a couple great. Canadians. So, uh, so yeah. I, and, and last year you got to be, were you involved, or good, did you get to see or witness the Darren Knight debacle? or? I did not. Okay, yes. so here's the thing. I didn't see the um, the meltdown. The meltdown. <laughs> what I saw was, me alone. so to, to give some backstory, he was listed as one of the Variety Magazine 10 comics to see, to watch. So I went to the meet and greet. So it was a panel discussion. with right. him. It was seven of those 10. And right before that happened, right before the, the panel started, there was a, a huge argument backstage. And I was standing right by the curtain. So I heard them yelling. And then when they... When he came out and sat down, no one would sit next to him Ooh. on the panel. And what was the argument about? Do you know? I have no idea. And then it got really aggressive on stage. And it was also not a very good presentation in general. So we got up and left because I'm like, this is not worth our time. Who right. else was on the panel? Um, Dulce Sloan, um, Amanda Seals. I can't remember the other the other comics. No one's uh, super notable. No, and, <laughs> no. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I, I we just left, and then when it came time to go to that show that night, we had tickets for it, and I was just like, I don't, I'm not compelled to go to the show. Right. Like, right. And, and and also you have to understand, the venue where that show was going to take, take place, it's a theater, and with you when you have industry passes, you go to the balconies, and it's about four floors up. Yeah. Uh, it was almost 100 degrees there that w w week we were there so it was hot as hell mm -hmm. and they shuffle you in and out so slowly it takes forever and right. it's, like, it's gonna be a hassle i'm just not gonna not go. worth it so we didn't go to the show and then we went to the after party that night and we heard what happened uh. and then it was just like wow what was great is we had chris red here like two weeks prior to that oh yeah yeah he was involved in that so and show. and what i found out about chris red is he's a fantastic guy yeah absolutely i mean i yeah. i got the honor of opening him for him one night when his opener failed to show up and uh I'm, uh no offense i know who you are love you <laughs> um but uh, i mean that shit happens sure. and, and i got to open for him and he is just the nicest coolest guy I love yeah to hear that. and he handled it the the best i mean he was trying to be like the um 
like the you could see the, the trainer. You know, he was trying to say to the guy, "Hey, look, you, this isn't what you do. This is not how you right. handle your business." And you could see the rage in his eyes, though. Oh, he he was wanted curious. to get into him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he had the self aware to know that people were recording. But so the thing about that whole situation is, Darren Knight's management failed him. I mean, they agreed to have him come in and do this festival and do his as a stand-up when he's a character. Yeah, he's right? not a stand-up. Not at all. So all I mean, and here's kind of the big rub of the thing: he gets humiliated on that stage. Yep. Right. He gets he gets booed off. It has not affected his career one iota. Nope. Because no one who's in his camp gives a shit and knows about Montreal. Well, right. I think a lot of his fans are more of fans of the social media, the small clips and, and videos, yeah. and not so yeah. much the, right. the, the, the stand-up. And they're, they're committed to just his YouTube presence. Right. They don't even know anything about his office. So for him, he's still making $10 million a year. I mean, he, he shows up here, sells the place out, Yeah. and uh, it's middle-aged women. We run out of wine every time. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it, there, there's a line out the door, and this guy goes up on stage, and it's a TED Talk. Yeah, I mean, all he does is just. I mean, it, you remember Chris Farley's character on Saturday Night Live yeah. when he did the yeah, hey? Chris show. Remember, remember when you were in the Beatles? I mean, right. saying to Paul McCartney. Right. I mean, that's what this guy's doing on stage. He's like, remember, remember that episode? I, I did this. And so he doesn't <laughs> go up as ca- in character. No. What the fuck is why? That's what I would be there for. No, yeah, I, he he thinks he's a stand-up comic. He's not. He does like street jokes, jokes like you and I've been doing since we were like uh-huh. six. Right. He, like he'll do a couple of those on stage, and then he just preaches to everybody, and it's like they eat what it up. And I'm going, get off the damn that stage. And that was kind of I think was kind of the rub in Montreal. He he started talking about how the other comics shouldn't use race and sexuality in their act or something like that, and the panel of comics were all either female or you know uh, homosexual in some way or whatever yeah you know and he's just but kicking the business with but, but that's Who the juicy it? but that's the juicy exactly. stuff you talk exactly. about race you talk, you talk about, about sex yeah, yeah. yeah. so <laughs> it's juicy he, did, he didn't do himself any favors the whole thing wasn't really handled well but um, right Horrible. but I, I was around for it but luckily i didn't see that that's just Amazingly awesome. By the way, uh, Matt Holt. If, if you're unfamiliar with him, that's you your are. loss. <laughs> it is your loss because this man, uh, first off, discovered by Brad Garrett, correct? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I, 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 I've heard I the story. Come I, on. I wouldn't put that on Brad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. I do comedy because of Brad. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, he, he was the one that that made you do this, right? Like he, he was the one that 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 basically dared me. Yeah. And then it uh, it didn't work out the way that we initially thought and i ended up having to do it on my own but, sure but yeah he gave me my first opportunity that i failed to follow through on well you know it, it, which is fine i mean I'm, I'm totally happy the way it worked out when, when you're first starting out in comedy i mean you're direction you're directionless i mean Absolutely. you just and, and it takes i even a while. started at that point i was just a fan yeah who just wanted to do it sure you know, i was that guy that walks up to you after a show and says you know i, I want to do this yeah. Like, yeah good for you yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah good, luck. good luck with that but the thing is, with that with that experience, there are times where I have to sit and think. When someone does come up to me after a show, it's like I, I was that person. Yeah. Maybe I should spend more time with that person because yeah. that's who I was. And had he not been as cool as he was, I w- probably wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So sometimes you have to think about what your impact can be with somebody. Absolutely. And, and it's easy to be done with a show and just be, I, oh, yeah, of course you're funny. Of course your friends think you're funny. Yeah. Of course, I mean, but that could be that push that person needs, you know? Sure. So, Do you want to tell that story about how... Uh, I mean, I can. I'd love it. I'd love, I know our, our listeners love to hear it. I would love to hear it, yeah. So... Brandy uh, would love to hear it. Before, <laughs> well, whatever Brandy wants. I'll That's it. right. <laughs> Within reason. Okay. I, I didn't bring any costumes. <sighs> she, she went... <sighs> I've got a leather hood and ball gag out. Oh, the well, there you go. <laughs> she's, she's all star spangled. Yeah, just for uh, in, just for the uh, roadside emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in 1989, 90, I'm old. Um, I was I was just a fan of stand up, and I would go I'd go to the yeah. club. Like when I turned 21, for me turning 21 had nothing to do with drinking. It was all about I could get into a club because I could drink underage. Yeah, I couldn't get in a fucking club. Can I swear on your podcast? Absolutely, no. Uh, it's absolutely. Just for Christian dads who vape. Oh, <laughs> Christian. <laughs> that was actually going to be the name of the podcast. Christian dads who vape. Naked. Yeah. Um, so, but I couldn't sneak into a comedy club underage. It was right. not. It was not happening. So, twenty-one was a big deal. So, when I turned twenty-one, I started going to see 
stand up. And it, it, I grew up in, in Indianapolis, which was Bob and Tom's home at the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pre syndication. Yeah. And so the comics I knew were the comics who were on their show. Well, Brad was by far the, the most interesting person that they had on the air. I mean, he'd be on four hours every morning, was the funniest thing ever. I would tape it. You know, I'd, put, I'd literally put Get a tape in and yeah. record it and go to, go to school and whatever. So anyway, so we started going to, going to see him. And we would see Brad multiple times for in a week. Like we'd go, if he had seven shows, we were at five of them, you know. And I started hanging out after the show, you know, and, and started talking to it. That's and, awesome. You know, it was like a big fan and all this kind of stuff. And, and we kind of formed a friendship in that time, you know. And um, so we, we played golf together. Like, we, we, we played golf together the morning that the bodies were found at the OJ site. Oh, wow. That, that Just to time stamp this whole thing. Wow. Was that 95? So, Something like that. 90, yeah. Yes. 90, whatever. Ninety three. I think it was ninety three. But, yeah. but but regardless, right that, I mean, that yeah. I remember that morning specifically because we had a very specific conversation about the whole thing. But, right. So anyway, um, I was on vacation in Las Vegas in probably nineteen ninety one, something like that. Ninety ninety one. He was. I didn't know this. He was performing. He was opening for the Righteous Brothers at Bally's. So I called, I just went to the hotel, I went and I asked for his room, they, they, get, they ran, sure. rang his room. Because it wasn't, I mean, he was Brad Garrett, but he wasn't Brad Garrett. He wasn't, yeah, yeah it wasn't know, known. On Ray Romano's show yet. You know, so but, uh, I get a hold of him, he gets me tickets to the show. He gets that's me, fantastic. Yeah, he gets me front table in Bally's, which is it's a, called the Celebration Room, I think. Or, yeah, Celebration yeah, Room. Mm -hmm. that's, and I think it seats 2,000 2, people. Jesus. It's a huge room. So I'm at the front table, watch the show. After the show, he takes me backstage. So it's me and my my wife at the time and and some and a friend. We're all hanging out. Every celebrity who's in town that week is backstage there, and so all these show business people are hanging out. I don't belong, you know. I'm, I'm not part of this group, but they're letting me be. I mean, I love that. And they're telling all these great stories, and I mean, really letting their guard down. It was an amazing yeah. night. And I tell people, I've had. A, a fantastic life. I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. That one of the best nights of my life. That is fantastic. Because I'm, I'm just a fly on the wall, and it's yeah. so great to be treated as a peer, you know. So the night's over, and it's like four in the morning or something, and we have like a, I think we have like a 10 a.m. flight back to, you know, our real life. Yeah. So now Brad's escorting us through the showroom, and all the the tables are all empty now, mm -hmm. you know. And he stops and he takes this, I mean, he's six foot nine. He's a big yeah. presence of a human being. And he takes this really deep breath and closes his eyes real tight. And I'm like, what is he doing? And he looks at me and he goes, this is the time. This is when I like to be in this room. Yeah. Because it's empty. And see, look, all this, it's not beautiful anymore. Yeah. And it, I, I see all that stuff. And I'm like, that's amazing. So I'll stop that part there because that's something I tell on my show. But it's this moment that I had with him. Yeah. Right? And it was really, really important to me. So we go back to our, we, we leave Vegas, and a few months later he's back in Indianapolis, and we're playing golf. This, this is the morning of the OJ thing, is when this happened. We're playing golf, and we're, we're finishing up, and he says, so uh, you're gonna go on stage tonight. <laughs> now keep in mind, Brad is the first person in my life I ever told I wanted to be a comic. Yeah. I, before I told my friends or family, he was the, the first person I trusted with what was maybe the most intimate thing in my life. Right, what are people gonna think, yeah. And uh, so he goes, yeah, you're going on stage tonight. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I've already talked to the owner, you're gonna do five minutes in front of me tonight. And I'm like, there's no way, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, no, you're a funny guy, just go do it. And his exact words were, will you just shut up and get your dick wet? <laughs> <laughs> and so I show up that night with my family, or my friends, and, and we're sitting at the front table, and the deal I told him was, okay, no one can know about this. I want it to be a surprise, because if I tell people, I won't do it. I'm sure. He goes, I don't care how you do it, just show up. So 20 minutes before the show starts, I start to freak out. Well, yeah. I go knock on the green room door, I go in, I'm like, dude, I can't do this. I mean, you, you just hit me with this today. I, this matters so much to me. If I mess this up, I embarrass me, I embarrass how big, how you. Big, um, how big was the audience, just so it I can get it? sold out, probably 300, 300 people. Jeez. Yeah, and I'm like, look, I, I, I just can't do this. Like, if I, if I mess this up, it, I mess it up for me, but for you too, and I, I just don't want it, it's too much. He goes, all right, fine. He goes, when I come back, 
have your shit together, try not to be a pussy, and do this. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, deal, no problem. Our first rate comedy was second to none. The comics are waiting, so join in the fun. Two decades of moral decay. Comedy on Broadway. What's up, Kentucky? This is Rex Chapman. I've struggled with addiction in the past. Today, I'm often asked where someone can turn for help. Bridgeway Institute Kentucky offers NAD Plus IV therapy to end addiction without horrible withdrawals. I've used NAD Plus. NAD Plus is a revolutionary treatment that helps heal the brain-destroying disease of addiction. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, visit Bridgeway Institute at bridgewaywellnessgroup.com. You might just be the one to save a life. That's bridgewaywellnessgroup.com. So I go and watch the show. We go out and have some drinks afterwards. We say our goodbyes. He gets Raymond, never comes back. Right. It took me six years from that point to get on stage for the first time. Wow. I mean, six years it took me to get on stage. Now, here's the interesting part. That night we were in Vegas. One of the things that he was talking about was how he wanted to open his own comedy club. Mm. Okay. And he had a very specific plan for this club that he wanted to open in Branson, Missouri. And there were people backstage who were willing to give him money to sure. help make this happen. Yeah. I mean, just in their, like, do you just need money? What do you need? And he's like, well, I don't even know at this point. Fast forward a few years, he opens his own club in Vegas. Mm-hmm. It's now considered to be the best club in the country. Yeah. As soon as he opened his club, that became my goal. It's like, that's the club I want to work in. Yeah. So last March, I do my first week at Brad Garrett's club, March of last year. Here's the great part of this. The night in Indianapolis that I was going to do a guest set in mm-hmm. front of him, Brad was headlining. I forget the MC. The feature was a comic named BT. Do you know BT? Sure BT's do. a great comic. He's a good friend of mine. So it was Brad, BT, and the MC. Mm-hmm. I was going to do five minutes. When I get booked in Vegas, the feature act that week is BT. And when I book it, I'm being told that Brad's probably going to be on the show that week. So I was going That's to amazing. I was going to get the chance to work with the two guys that I would have gotten to work with my yeah. very first time on stage. Now, as, as it worked out, Brad got single parents or whatever that show was on mm-hmm. ABC, so he right. started shooting, so he wasn't there. But still, I mean, the fact that BT was part of that is great. That's so, yeah. awesome. So it was. I mean, it was that last year was a highlight of my year last year, and then this year I went back in June and uh, had an amazing week. I get off. I'm, I go to LA for the, the week after that. I get off the the airport, I'm I'm at LAX, and I get a text from Brad saying, I watched the video, you killed for me, I want you four times a year now. Oh my God. That's huge. Yeah, so it was, I mean, I'm forever grateful for that guy. That is, I love that story. It's all happening. I love that story. (laughs) Yeah, it's only taken 20 years. Hey, but four times a year at the best club in the country. No, it's amazing. I'm I'm fortunate. There's a, uh, to hear them talk, they say it's a two year waiting waiting list to just get you know, sure. considered for that room. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. But you know, that's what building relationships are all about in this business, right? Yeah. You know, I tell people that all the time. And when I started off, I was a house MC and the three of the four people or yeah, three of the four people that took me on the road are three people that I MC'd for early on that I became friends with. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't kissing their ass. So I wasn't, you know, getting them water or whatever. We just talked and, and those, when, it, when I was ready, those are the guys that were like, yeah, if you're ready, come and do it. We'll, we'll take you. I love that. That's how this business used to work. I, yeah. I, 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 I try to make it work that way now. I mean, I try to pay it forward as much as I can. But yeah. That's so important, can. yeah. Sure. So. That's fantastic. Do you, do you hear that? No, every time I, I lean back in the chair. I wasn't going to say anything. I thought you, you were feeling well. <laughs> I just, you know, we, some people have stomach issues. It's no, okay. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's this chair. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. Oh, all right. Now you hear it too? No, I'm doing it myself. Oh, okay. I, just, I, want, I didn't want you the only one having fun. <laughs> Except mine are real, so sorry. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's all right. What do you got coming up? Anything good? Uh, what do I have coming up? 
uh, I have a couple weeks off. Which I mean, is you're fantastic. you're like all right. So people, whether you know or not, or aside from being a full time stand up comedian, right. Matt is also part of a label uh, that's based out of Frankfort, Kentucky. Yes, uh, on tour records. Yes, and uh, it is it's it's head up by uh, Ross. Yeah, Ross Duncan yeah. owns the label, and, and he's he's a, a prior comedian, fantastic yep. guy. Yep. Um, it it should have been called the the Twin Ballheads because <laughs> well, I wasn't involved, <laughs> and, and I'm still trying to hang on to this. Well, but, you know, it's not working. Let it go. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've let it go this much. Do you, do you, right, so with my hair, uh-huh. like I did like you for a long time. And I was uh, working in Orange County Jail at the time. And I, and everybody's like, why don't you just shave your head? And I was like, no. I said, when I be, like see the Captain Steubing happening, where I've got yeah. none here, but it's the toilet bowl. <laughs> yep. I said, I'll shave it. So I get into a use of force. And literally, I'm in the wait, center wait, of the you frame. You know what? A, a use of force. Hand to hand. It, oh, okay. it means that it, I'm, yeah, I don't know the fuck. I'm way. sorry. I'm sorry. All right. So, so he and, signaled to and, and, in the way. Wait, you way. know the lingo? She was former yeah. law enforcement as well. Oh. That's why we get along so well. Oh my god! Wait. So you have handcuffs too? Then. I have gold ones in the car. Gold ones. They go with the leather hood okay, and ball all right, gag. All right. Full circle, people. Full yeah. circle. Okay. We'll, we'll have a. This is a different discussion. <laughs> this isn't so, for the Christian dads who vape. No, no, not at all. <laughs> kind of it is. Well. It, you know it is. Yeah. All right. Um, so I literally, I've got the guy pinned, and I'm center frame of the camera. All right. Okay. So I'm pinned right. him to the ground, and I was just, I was talking to him. My head was down, so you can see the top of my head. And after the use of force, we're reviewing the, the video because okay. we're writing our reports. And Those I look at the video, firing. and everybody else is like, yeah, and then you did this, you did that. And I'm going, I need to shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> the next day I came in with my head shaved. They're like, what, what happened? I was like, watch the use of force. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not far <laughs> off from it. I'm just not sure. You might be surprised. Yeah. I was very surprised because I was very apprehensive. I didn't yeah. know how it was going to look. Well, I had a similar situation. Mine was not wrestling around with someone, but I was <laughs> I was at a club. Wasn't and, it, uh, though? It was a, well, kind of. I was wrestling with myself. Um, <laughs> but I was, uh, I was at a comedy festival, and we were backstage as a group waiting on the results to be read off. And which, I don't know why I was. I know that I was not in the running, right? I don't do well at festivals. I'm not a festival comic. I don't compete. I don't give a shit. I'm yeah. with you. So I really, it was not going my way. So I'm sitting backstage and they have, a, we don't, I don't know this, but I look up and I see this monitor. So they show the audience, the audience is out in the, in, the, in the theater. They show them a video of us backstage waiting on the results. And the shot is from up here. That's never good. So it's, it's good. over my left shoulder. So I'm like, I'm looking I'm like, okay, that's Mike. And then who's, oh fuck, that's me. <laughs> and this is when I was still hanging, this this is a big difference. I was still hanging on. Right. There's a headshot out there of me with like gelled hair. Sure. And because I was just holding on, and I saw that, I'm like, oh fuck that, That's that ends today. That yeah. upsets me so much. So I went and, and started at least <laughs> clippering this down. Because sure. Because I was like, what, what's ever, what? No one loves me? Like no one in my life? Would pull me aside and go, you look like a, you look like an avocado or a, 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 a fucking artichoke. Just I mean, get there, rid of it. There's a few things people just won't tell men. When my husband and I first got together, he was, he's my, we, I don't know how old he is, but. Uh, hold on, hold on. You're married to this man? Yeah. For a decade. So you're, Ten years. you're currently married. That's a, that's a decade. He's, he's <laughs> in his 30s. He's okay. not 40. That's, a, that's good enough. You, you hope. Like when you I'll leave, run when background you leave here, if you want, I can do that. When you leave here, mm-hmm. you're going to eventually be in a home. Hey, we live in the same house. That, that, that includes this. We man. have four kids. Yeah. You have four children. Now, mm-hmm. do you know how old your kids are? Couldn't tell you. No, yeah, that's not important. Can't be bothered kids with them. Kids come and go. I cannot. Kids come and go. Cannot no, be bothered with them. We just hope they become where you can just get them out. But Most, he, yeah. you know, uh, he started losing his hair very early. And when we first got this was ten years ago when we first got together, I was like, this monk situation yeah. is got to go. Yeah. yeah. And he was like. Like, I know it's that that way. You know it's that way. Other people, like, when nobody's had a conversation. I was like, well, tell the truth and shame the devil, Linda, because yeah, <laughs> this has got to go. Right? And he shaves it. He it's doesn't shave it like Josh. It's the that I'm worried about. The what? It's the upkeep I'm worried about. You know, it's... Do you get a five o'clock shadow? Um, I do. I do. Because, like, this, like, the crown will yeah. still grow heavy. Yeah. But it's right here that I don't worry about. But... I just I go by my facial hair, so yeah. once it's like ready to shave, like I'll go two three days, and then it's just everything. Yeah, see, I can, I I own clippers. I won't even clipper my own hair because I can't do the uh, the edging and the maintenance in the back. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. So see, it would be better doing what you're doing. Absolutely, because it's just clean. Just pretty, all comes I'm, off. I'm pretty close to this. Yeah, I'm pretty close. I I say do it, um, and I'm telling you, you're gonna be you're gonna be. I think you'll be mildly surprised. Like when I was doing, I was like, hey, I'm gonna look like an idiot when I'm bald, and I actually like being bald. I, yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm. 
pretty much there. Are you yeah, there? I mean, I mean, I'm pretty much bald. The way well, it is. you know. So I don't really care. See, right? we're talking about it. I don't want to talk into it. <laughs> no, no, <it's> fine. <laughs> See how sensitive Does it is? <laughs> I'm actually not sensitive about it. I, I'm just a realist. I'm like, you know, I turned 50 this year. Yeah. So. Well, I, yeah, good to go then. I would probably look less 50 with. I mean, I, I agree. Like I, I'm, I'm getting close to where I have to just for men. I mean, I'm yeah, almost fifty. See, I just let it go. I get, see, it, like my dad was like white, like, but he had a full head of hair. Yeah, dick. Well, see, and now uh, that's why I had to go blonde because I'm going so gray. Yeah, and I'm almost black hair. But you usually, like, multi change your color. Oh yeah. Anyway. I mean, it goes all over. Yeah. Yeah. But it's very starchy. I mean, usually, I stay in the in the darker elements, but I. I we're, we're talking about hair again still? It's just everything in general. Everything in general? Okay. It's all starting to go. Okay. It's like a Halloween decoration from the neck down. She could totally right. hold her own. <laughs> Throw whatever you want at her. <laughs> you don't have to be yeah, shy. I'm, I'm not worried about it. So. It's That's, I'm worried about this this husband who may or may not be well, 20 years I know he's age. at least 18, so at least it's Listen, legal. Maybe. <laughs> Here's the problem. But 10 years ago when he shaved his head, he would have been eight. Yeah. So it's a rough yeah. kid. Well, yeah. Yeah. is it the, the, the playing field rule on that? If he's I on think the field. So. Yeah, I don't think up here so much matters. I think it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and apparently, women now, there's a renaissance. Women are into bald men. So that's it, it's very true. Yeah. It's very Absolutely. true. Yeah. Um, I, I found that quite a bit that comes yeah. up. Yeah. And so, it, I, I mean, honestly, I mean, you, you know what you're going to get every day. The, you, you jump out of bed. It's not like you got to go. Oh, I got to comb my hair. No, usually I just have to flatten this back down. Isn't, yeah. isn't there some worry about whether you have a weird looking head or not? Always, and that was why I was really apprehensive. But to be fair, we've already got a little sample. Yeah, I just don't know. This <laughs> like she's she's like, we see the appetizer. Right, Bring yeah, on the yeah. main course. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not against it. Yeah. Do, do we need to do it on the, on the show or something? Or something? Well, we brought the Clippers. Yeah, yeah that's no, no, because that's not gonna happen. Not today. Uh, so, any addition on the tattoo front? I mean, cause no, it, nothing know, yet. Because uh, you're a fellow connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah actually, I we all are. Probably will. Um, September 20th is my 20 year comedy anniversary. So, I'll probably get something. For are you going to do that when you're at Area 51? I'm going to do my best. They have not invited me yet. So <laughs> they, they have not invited someone you. Someone else has been booked, I'm guessing. Oh, that's, um, that's probably horrible. Probably Darren Knight or something. I don't know. <laughs> Um, he is part alien, isn't he? So yeah, I think I'll, I'll think of something for that. Yeah. Do you have anybody you're going to? Because there's some good guys yeah, in Frankfurt. Yeah. I actually, my guy is in Bradford, Ohio. Oh, okay. So you're gonna. Yeah. I you, mean, that's who's you, done my last like hey. six. I go to the same guy for everything. Yeah. And also for, last. The, for the listener, um, it's called Cutthroat Tattoo. Okay. So it's kind of around Dayton, a little bit north of Dayton. Okay. Uh, the guy is named Mark Hill. He's incredibly inexpensive. Like very, very, like this this uh, day of the dead on my arm. I love it. That he charged me sixty bucks for that. Damn, that's outrageous. Yeah, that's these were all awesome. thirty a piece. Wow. What? And these they're not like, hey, I'm a fan of yours. These are your, these. That's what he charges me. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's our prison prices. Yeah, the guy's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have to smuggle anything in or anything. <laughs> so your butt is still clear. That's good. As far as That's I know, good. yeah. I mean, I was nothing in the wall locker. No, okay. no, no. I mean, I did have to give him also a carton of cigarettes, but I think yeah. that's fair. It's yeah, just sure. force a habit, you know. So bring some honey buns, and uh, you're good to go. Right. Yeah. Some noodles. <laughs> when do we talk about vaping? When's that? I, right now. Oh, uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Do you like blueberry muffin vape juice? What do I have in my pocket? You are. You're vaping. Are you now? a vapor? Are you a vapor? Uh, only the uh, what's illegal in Kentucky. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Where, um, can I on sure. a real level? Where do you Where do you buy it from? Where do you? I'm a fucking comic. Where do you buy it? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who I work with. Yeah, I mean, the the it, it, it's not hard. To I find. mean, the the whole. I can put you in touch with. Somebody. See, I I have uh, you know anyone that I'm friends with. Is hesitant to tell me anything because they're like, well, you, what you are you going to do with this? You blab is what it sounds like. Well, yeah, yeah and so I'll say it on camera, but it's between us and the Lord where you get it from. <laughs> right. No. I just I want to know is there like like a paparazzi lady on Facebook like oh I've got this Alaskan Kush and I've got this and sure, honestly he's that. he's a hundred percent right when he says like just the people we work with yeah. I mean no yeah. I believe it yeah. are do you not have people hesitant to, to to say things around you not really <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly yeah <laughs> They're all like, you used to be a cop. You're cool. Anyway, <laughs> you're all right. Yeah, you're, you're gonna be. I guess I don't give off that vibe because they will. They're well, because you, you you still do security and stuff. You still got that walk and, and well, yeah, yeah. But who 
prepared. I, I don't know. I didn't. I don't know what a security walk is. I, I you don't know, know what that is. I didn't. I kind of know what it you is. You know what it is. You, don't put you know, like when you get pulled over, it's this whole thing, right. your duty belt. People always tell me that I look like a cop. Yeah, one hundred percent retired cop. Yeah. Do I really? Yeah, you look you like the look. cop who just retired to retirement party, and you get shot. What the fuck? Why am I get shot? Like rules is rules. like dead shot or just like injured. Pretty dead. Wait, Pretty at, dead. At my party, well, at, shot? at his party, it's this at the happens. Party, it's gonna be a scene. It's gonna be someone Who's shooting like, me. You killed his dad because his dad was a okay. Bad so guy. the oh, purpose so male. Wait, so I was an asshole cop. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> to the max. Like really, I'm ten days away from retirement, and you're going down. Oh, oh so man. it was like that. Yeah, that's what I feel. Oh, that's man. that's what I get. Right, that's so story so it's a it's a male male perp, and he 100%. killed his dad. Yep. Okay. And this is like this twenty-year-old kid who's like, Ooh, you oh, he's only twenty. Pops. Is he it, like? Is he like? And you feel white bad. Collar? Now good. she's good oh, with yeah. ages. Yeah. When I'm being <laughs> shot, she's fucking great with ages now. Fantastic. That's, see, I I took it as you were just like you're at your retirement party and you're disgruntled because they're giving you the fucking gold Z watch and you're brain, like, though. you know, just fucking shove it up your ass. You're like, that, you're like, I didn't do all this for a gold watch. <laughs> I, I, yeah, living shocking. for that watch. <laughs> I've known her 12 minutes. And she I thinks I'm an that. asshole. I mean, she's not wrong. In the movie. Fair. That's not what she's saying. In the movie I'm casting you in, that's what I see. All right. We're going to come to the end of the uh, free portion before we continue with the bonus footage. Uh, oh, this is for, oh, Yeah, this is because we're on Patreon. Yeah, I would pay for this. This is, this is hysterical. <laughs> so uh, when we go to our bonus footage, we're going to find out what else Brandy thinks. Uh, yeah. Well. Submit your selfies and I'll, I'll write a movie for you. <laughs> Who's um, casting this movie? I have no, it, You're going to cast it? it? She is all parts, apparently. I'm not, I'm I never not, I'm put not my asking. money in the I'm show. But I'm, I'm dying to hear this. Matt, what are your final thoughts about this episode so far? I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't realize we were recording. I really thought that when you clapped, it put me into some kind of trance. <laughs> and I'm just kind of slowly coming out of it. I'm like... Uh, about by the time I adjusted to the temperature in the room, that is fantastic. Now, if it, we're starting, yeah, but no, now I find out it's a whole episode's done. Yeah, if they want to find tour dates, where do they go? Uh, MattHoltComedy.com. Fantastic. So, guys, make sure you check out Matt Holt. And, uh, you know, it's two bucks to see the rest of this episode. Two bucks. Hello. Come $2. on. $2. Who the hell doesn't have two dollars? I'll send that paper boy after you. Anyway, two dollars to see the rest of it. Uh, everybody, uh, it's been good seeing you. Matt Holt. Yeah, thanks for having Brandy me. Brandy Nicole. I'm Josh Artem. We'll see you next.